Hello everybody and welcome to another Mac Deep Dive video. In today's talk I want to dive into a prevalent and recurring flaw in Mac computer power measurements that is often perpetuated by reputable channels and websites. A few months back I performed power measurements on the M4 Mac Studio and found that under heavy load it can draw over 100 watts on the CPU, 200 watts on the GPU and over 300 watts combined. Many folks in the comments expressed surprise while others outright challenged the findings. One of the most interesting points was that using a power meter that just measures the wall plug power draw was wrong and that I should instead use a dedicated app to check the max CPU and GPU usage. After all, this is what reputable websites like Ars Technica or YouTube channels like Mac Stack use to publish power consumption numbers of Mac computers, using apps like MX Power Gadget or Acetop. If they rely on apps, surely it's the correct way to go about it, right? Well, not really. All these apps rely on a macOS facility called Powermetrics. While Apple CPUs do have on-die telemetry in form of current, voltage and temperature sensors, they are not intended to be used for absolute measurements. The power consumption reported by Powermetrics is not measured power, it is a computed value from Apple's predefined model. Apple's documentation on power metrics clearly states that it should not be used to make comparisons between devices, yet reputable testers continue to do so. Let's take a look now how power metric actually works. It all starts with a population study. Apple asks TSMC to perform wafer level testing on dedicated sample wafers. TSMC performs an exhaustive voltage frequency sweep to determine max achievable frequencies at each voltage and measures power versus both voltage and frequency. Furthermore, TSMC also does a detailed measurement of leakage currents at a wide range of temperatures. This data is then used by Apple to build their baseline power model to estimate total power of various functional blocks in their systems on the chip as a combination of dynamic and leakage power. Then, during manufacturing of chips for Apple computers, individual dyes are tested and so-called trim coefficients are determined per chip. These are essentially calibration constants in Apple's power model. Once determined, they are written into the chip's one-time programmable memory. Each time the computer is booted, the firmware reads the trim coefficients to instantiate the runtime estimator. The estimator uses various runtime data like chip frequency, voltage, utilization factor and temperature to compute an estimated average power. Now that we have a better idea how power metrics work, let's do a side-by-side -side comparison with a power meter. In this test I will be using the Shelly Plug S to measure instantaneous power on the wall socket and I will juxtapose it with the power metrics as reported by macOS. First off, Cinebench. In the top left is the instantaneous power measured by the Shelly plug. In the terminal window below is the estimated power reported by macOS power metrics. First off, I run the CPU multi-threading test. We can observe that the actual wall power is close to double the estimated CPU power by power metrics. Another thing to observe is that in this test, all the CPU cores are running at their max turbo frequency of 4.5 GHz. This is possible because Cinebench does not fully stress the CPU cores. Underneath it uses ray or path tracing to render images and these are memory latency sensitive and unable to saturate the CPU SIMD units like matrix multiplication would, which is why I used the latter in my previous stress test videos. Next I run the Cinebench GPU test. The performance is vastly superior now thanks to hardware ray tracing engines in the M4 Max chip. Observe how the difference between the actual measurement and the Mac OS estimate is even more profound now. A threefold difference. I will examine in more detail why that is the case, but first I want to really stress the CPU and GPU. For that I will use Julia. I will multiply two large matrices, first on the CPU and then on the GPU. This is representative of highly optimized AI training workloads. When multiplying two matrices on the CPU, the Mac Studio consumes over 140 watts wall power. As we can see, the difference between measured and estimated CPU power is again close to twofold. 
I redid the same test and recorded the power measured by my dedicated power meter and as you can see they closely match those measured by the Shelly plug. Now the GPU test. The measured power draw on a pure GPU load is over 200 watts, peaking at 208 watts, while power metrics reports only 68 watts. Again a threefold difference, similar to what we observed in the Cinebench test. How to explain this discrepancy? One way is to follow the power flow from the wall plug and break down the power distribution over the principal functional units. The power supply in the M4 Max Studio is rated at 480 watts. A 208 watt load falls right in the sweet spot for this power supply. Assuming it is platinum rated, i.e. 92% efficient at 50% load, it would deliver 191 watts DC to the board. A big chunk of that will go to the system on the chip. A smaller but still significant share goes to the DRAM, peripherals and the cooling. As I will soon explain in more detail, 161 watts of that goes into the SOC or 153 watts after VRM losses. To estimate DRAM power consumption, I looked up public figures for LPDDR5X energy use per sustained gigabytes per second. The median reported value was 0.04 watts per gigabyte per second. Applying that to the M4 Max 546 gigabyte per second peak bandwidth, I arrived at 22 watts peak power consumption. The same source estimated the memory controller power per sustained gigabytes per second at 0.015 watts per gigabyte per second. Plugging the numbers for the M4 Max, I arrived at 8 watts. Recall that power metrics reported 68 watts for the GPU power, that leaves 85 watts unaccounted for. How to explain that? A GPU power model like Axel Watch can help us get an idea what share of GPU power can be consumed by various functional blocks. In this illustration we can see the functional blocks of a GPU together with their share of the power consumption under load. Important to observe here is that static power, light gray in the bottom and registers, orange in the middle, consume a rather significant chunk of power. Static power is primarily modeled based on leakage currents. The amount of static power an SOC consumes is highly dependent on its operating temperature and voltage. As the GPU heats up under load, its static power will increase significantly. Furthermore, the Excel Watch static power model accounts for power gating to accurately model static power in idle and load conditions. Using the Excel Watch model as my baseline and assuming that the power metrics figure of 68 watts was just the ALU power and nothing else, I came up with the following power breakdown per functional block. As you can see, the register, caches and the network on the chip consume a substantial share of the GPU power just a bit less than the ALU itself. Of course, this is just a guesstimate, so take it with a grain of salt. Apple M-series chips were often portrayed as paragons of efficiency. However, a closer examination shows that even compared to Nvidia's last gen RTX 4090, the M4 Max trails by a significant margin in GFLOPs per watt in dense matrix multiplication. This is because the NVIDIA GPU comes with dedicated matrix processing hardware, aka tensor cores. Apple took a cue and introduced so-called neural accelerators in the A19 GPU cores. Early benchmarks of the M5 chip indicate that Apple effectively quadrupled FP16 performance. Assuming unchanged power consumption, the M5 Max chip would now have a substantial advantage in power efficiency over the RTX 4090 but would nonetheless trail it by a large margin in absolute throughput. If there is one thing I would like you to take away from this video, it is to pay close attention to the method a reviewer uses to measure Mac computer power consumption. If they use an app, be very careful with interpreting the results as they are likely to be significantly off. If you yourself would like to measure power consumption, be sure to use a power meter. Nowadays, many quality smart plugs come with a built-in power meter functionality. An easy method to measure a CPU or GPU power under load is as follows. Find a calculation that isolates the CPU or the GPU from the rest of the chip. Then, first measure the device's idle wall plug power. Second, 
measure the device's load wall plug power. Finally, subtract the two to derive the CPU or GPU power. Furthermore, you may want to account for power conversion losses by applying a conversion factor to adjust your numbers. What do you think? Leave your thoughts in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click like and subscribe to the channel. See you next time!